Why Avengers Endgame Suck, today on Dungeon Craft. If you enjoy our content, why not subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. Thank you. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, coming to you from Dungeon University, and this is my friend Cortland, and we're going to be doing a review of Avengers Endgame, which I hated. And I didn't. <laughs> Alright, so you go first. Explain why you liked it. Personally, I thought that the movie tied up a lot of loose ends that Infinity War left us, and, you know, I just have been enjoying what they've done with the characters so far, so getting to see it all play out in a really big way, I enjoyed. Well, I hated it, and <laughs> this is why. It's, this movie is completely illogical. This is how, this plastic mesh, this is how many plot holes are in this movie. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Iron Man's in space, Captain Marvel flies out of nowhere, she rescues him, flies him back to Earth from the deepest of space. So she's able to fly with a spaceship, carrying a spaceship across the universe, and then and, and experience all the trauma of re-entry to land Iron Man down. Then they go back in time, they chop off Thanos' head, Thor chops off his head. That wasn't back right. in time. That or was, whatever. That was, that was real time. Okay. They go back in current time, they go to Thanos' planet, hunt him down, Thor chops off his head. So now they discover tr time travel five years later, and they have one chance to go back in time with a limited amount of pin particles. Why would you take all of these people who have no superpowers at all, but not take Captain Marvel, who is the most powerful being in the universe? It's established. She could carry a spaceship from the distant universe back to Earth. Why not wait until you have her with you? They're not in a rush because Thanos is dead. And even if Captain Marvel was on the other side of the universe and they had a caller, they could wait. They already waited five years. What's waiting six years or even seven years? Just wait till she gets there and then go back in time. They already had what they needed to go back in time. They had the people that they needed, that they wanted, and they weren't putting themselves in situations where they necessarily needed Captain Marvel. She was necessary against the strongest powers and they were going to regular moments in history. So having her or not having her wasn't really a factor, I think. Here's my next problem. Nebula knows because she tells the Avengers, Thanos killed my sister. Why doesn't she say, hey, uh, by the way, as we're breaking up into teams, heads up, someone's going to a death planet from which no one can return. Um, yeah, what if they had taken Thor and Rocket to that planet and, and there's nothing that they love to throw yeah. over the side? Yeah, but that's what part it, of the That's part of the plot that they figured out on their own when they made the movie. I think it's lame that Black Widow dies. She's supposed to be this great fighter. She is the best of the fighters, right? Iron Man just wears a suit. And she dies in this lame way, killing herself. And it happens like 45 minutes before the end of the movie. And I think that if you're going to kill a, m a main character, you do it like Star Trek too. They, they wait, they kill one character, Spock, at the end of the movie because her death 45 minutes from the end of the movie it robs her death of, of gravitas, as well as it undercuts Iron Man's death as well. It reminds me a lot of X-Men 3, where they kill Cyclops, Professor X, and then we're supposed to be f sad an hour later when Jean Grey dies, but they've already been killing off a bunch of people, so these deaths all undercut one another. Well, maybe you don't have the right emotions, because I personally was sad at each death. Um, so I don't know if that's your thing, but... They, they, they did mention that Black Widow was running the Avengers and everything while everyone was dead for those five years. And she made the comment that she was just trying to do something good. Because typically in her past, you know, that wasn't really where she came from. And so that's why when it came down to that one moment, she wanted to be able to do something good for the people when she didn't come from that background. She came from somewhere where she wasn't doing good for people and she was used as more of a weapon against the good people. Um, and by sacrificing herself to get everyone else back, she that kind of was the reason why. So it made sense. Like that was her moment. That was her that all of that her character had led up to at that point. You don't feel that it's lame the way the most prominent female character in the movie kill herself to save a guy. Like, is that a good message for little girls? She's not killing herself to save a guy. She's killing herself for the good of all of humanity. In that moment, it's her or him, and 
she's the one that doesn't have the family, doesn't have the background, doesn't have anything else. She knows he does. She knows that when the mission is done, he will go back to a family. She will go back to a desk, but there's not going to be someone to fill the hole in his family. The end of the film, I had a problem with that too. The film is over. I'm not going to question the logistics of time travel. I'm going to accept their time travel premises <laughs> based on, on the, what they've already established. But they've established there's a limited number of Pym particles, so there's only a limited number of times they can go back. But the end, they resurrect Hank Pym, and he knows how to make the Pym particles, and Bruce Banner still knows how to make a time machine. And they probably have the schematics because there's a thing called the internet, so they probably have it saved on the cloud. Moreover, Tony Stark would have about $150 billion insurance policy. So money is not an object. Why don't they just build a new time machine and send, guess who back in time? Captain Marvel, because she's the most powerful being on the in the whole universe. And it's established. She's at Tony Stark's funeral standing on the porch. Why don't they say, just stick around for a few months. We're going to send you back in time to the moment where Tony put on the glove and she, she can go and put on the glove herself, like push Iron Man out of the way and save him. Because it was already established back when they go back in time to New York that Captain America can fight himself. Therefore, Captain Marvel could also be in two places at the same time fighting on the same side. And she could put on the glove and it's no problem for her because she's so powerful she can carry a spaceship back to Earth and fly through a spaceship and destroy the whole thing. If you were paying attention to the movie, you would realize that well, going back in time does not change the reality that you have. It just sets a new reality. So it's the multiverse theory. And so if she were to go back in time and push the gauntlet off of his hand, it wouldn't do anything to the reality that, that, that they lived in. It would only create a new reality where things weren't how they were. Yeah, but then why would they go back in time for the first place? Because then they went back to those exact moments and return the stones where they were so they didn't alter each individual reality. They couldn't, they can't do that with a person's life. Thanos is from this advanced species from across the universe or whatever. They're so advanced that they have beam weapons, they have energy weapons, and they have spaceships capable of interstellar travel. They've obviously got scientists. Wouldn't one of those scientists figure out what the Pym particles were and have been traveling back in time before the Avengers ever did it. Tony Stark is not nearly as smart as that advanced species is. All right, well, I think that the things that were necessary on Earth weren't the things that are necessary in all these other galaxies. So just because the Pym particle was something that was created on Earth for and was super advanced on Earth, but they have other things that seem more advanced than what we have, they're in a different kind of area, so they, maybe they didn't need a pin particle, they needed these weapons. So they were focusing on that and not on trying to create a pin particle. Uh, I also didn't like the... <laughs> w I didn't like the end, because there are too many scenes where, like, Thanos is fighting... Like, he's fighting... Uh, which, which is the guy he fights first? First he fights... No, Iron, Iron Man. Man. Beats him up, then he fights Thor, almost kills him, then Captain America jumps in, and then he almost kills him. And then Scarlet Witch beats him up, and then he fights her back, and then Captain Marvel gets a piece of him, and then he fights her back, and then finally Iron Man. It's like six times this. The, there's like six fights where Thanos is almost beat up, but it just keeps going on and on and on, and I felt it, it's very boring, and it's against this the same orange-brown apocalyptic wasteland where you have no perspective, just like in... Batman vs. Superman and Wonder Woman. I think that the first Avengers movie, where you have buildings, it's a lot more interesting because you have perspective with the spaceships and stuff. They might as well be fighting in the middle of ultimate dungeon terrain with no, no other scenery. They're just beating each other up in front of a green screen. I think it's boring. It just shows how powerful Thanos is, though. That's why everything's destroyed. What'd you think of Fat Thor? Well... I hated Fat Thor. Why? Um, I, uh, one, this is wish fulfillment, and Thor, he looks like me now, and they make him the butt of a lot of fat jokes and say there's cheese whiz running through his, his veins, and I just think that fat jokes are mean. They too close to home? Yeah. <laughs> I, I struggle. I don't know. That's I, how he reacted to not being able to save the world the first time. He was depressed because he thought he was the most powerful person Ever. Oh and, well, uh, and Thor, he, and he, Thor and he, is, he wasn't. But Thor is the most powerful person. He should have grabbed He's the not. Infinity Gauntlet. He failed, though. He failed, and he couldn't handle that. And then he killed the dude, and I, you know. 
You're the camera Sorry. person. When Thor picks up his hammer again, he's really excited because if he found out that he was still worthy, and I think that that's also really powerful that, like, you know, even after everything that he's done, he's still worthy enough to hold his hammer to be, like, who he is. So it kind of was, he was able to see and he started pulling himself out of. Vision has picked up the hammer, Captain America's picked up the hammer, just about everyone's picked up this Not hammer everyone. now. That's a very small portion of all the characters. <laughs> if I had to pick some of my favorite parts from the movie, I think, well, personally, one of the best parts was when Peter Parker has the gauntlet and Captain Marvel comes up to him and asks him if he has something for her. And he hands her over the gauntlet and asks her how she's going to get through. And all of the female characters come up to help defend and Mar Captain Marvel gets all the way through. I really liked that scene. I thought it was a really nice girl power scene and it kind of just showed that I think Marvel is working towards getting more strong female characters even though you think that they... But they didn't do anything. She they, says block they, for me but then she just rolls right in. She into got all the way through. I really liked that scene. I thought it was very powerful. I like Wasp. Wasp is okay. That's the only one. Uh, I like I liked uh, Black Widow. The, I'm pretty sure the two strongest characters are supposed to be Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel. Yeah, Scarlet Witch, her powers are like ill-defined, and here's the deal with Captain Marvel. She's supposed to be powerful, but is. so why isn't she going back in time to save Iron Man? Because a his contract is up. I know. That's see. That's the problem. It's like I knew what the ending was going to be before well, I ever you didn't went in. Actually, know what the ending was going to be because you didn't know how it was going to happen. You didn't know exactly what was going to happen. I still say at the end, there's plenty of pin particles they could have sent Captain Marvel back to the moment where to defeat and Thanos. It wouldn't be their reality anymore. Though. I, I I know, but this poor kid when she grows up, she's going to be like, why didn't the Avengers go back in time? Why did they just give me unlimited cheeseburgers? Here's some Dungeons and Dragons tips based on this movie. If you have a long-running campaign and one of the long-running characters dies, you know, after years and years of play, maybe you shouldn't kill her one hour before the end of the, of the, of the session. Instead, make her die in battle at the end of the session. If you have a battle, final battle, it should be interesting visually. It shouldn't be an apocalyptic wasteland. Okay, your final thoughts. It made me cry a lot. I did. I was very emotional throughout the movie. There was a lot of emotion, a lot of really important parts that, you know, I thought really added to the Marvel Universe. And I'm not sure where they'll go from here. They've kind of passed their little, um... They've pass, passed, passed the, the torch, torch on. to a bunch of less charismatic actors. Well, there's... <laughs> we can't do anything about the fact that contracts ran out. They have to do something. They should have paid him. I think they tried. No. Well, they should pay him more. They should pay Downey $150 million to be well, Iron Man. Forever? Yeah, I would. I did enjoy the movie. The three hours flew by, which I wasn't sure that they would. I'm ready to watch it again to see things that maybe I missed the first time. So what do you think about uh, Avengers Endgame? You could put your thoughts in the comments below. I'd like to thank Cortland for being here today and congratulate her on her 100, what is it, the 100 one, touchdown? 1,000 one points in basketball. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Not basketball, him. that's the orange one, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right, so she's awesome. Thanks a lot for watching Dungeon Craft. I'll see you at the table and may all your rolls be 20s. If you enjoyed today's content, click the Dungeon Door logo to subscribe to the channel and the bell icon to receive notifications. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at DungeonCraft.